Welcome back to the show. Been a big week for going in the tank from drag racing to Formula One. Rolling over to help a teammate has become headline news. The story starts with last Monday's 55th running of the U.S. Nationals. When last week's guest, John Force, on the far side left way late, then promptly drove out of the groove and spun the tires, it allowed teammate Robert Height to advance to the finals and the NHRA countdown to the championship, eliminating the guy in the upper right, Cruz Pedregon. Cruz copped to the obvious. He raced John Force in the second round at Indy and lost. If he'd simply beaten John, he wouldn't uh, be having this conversation. However, Cruz's brother Tony was not so philosophical. I think it's a crying shame that, you know, that, that there are teams out here that are allowed to manipulate the outcome of a race. I was there for eight years, so I understand what the concept is. Of course, Tony understands. In 2003, driving for force and route to his first funny car championship, Tony beat his teammates eight times. Seven of those times, either Force or Gary Densham failed to make it down the track. In the other one, John drove across the center line and was disqualified. So, does all, all of this make Force Racing the epicenter of drag race tanking? Well, actually, no. Watch the uh, video here. Gary Selzy smokes the tires against teammate Whit Bazemore. That was back in 03 at Seattle. The backstory is Skel uh, Selzy had lane choice, and the team chose the slow lane. Made Gary crazy, but the team strategy helped Bazemore keep his title hopes alive. Or the best example of all, the legendary bounty hunter, Connie Kalita. His son, Scott, lines up against cousin Doug Kalita at Brainerd a few years ago. Doug was contending for the championship. Car owner Connie took no chances. He walked over and shut off Scott's car. Doesn't make it right, but let's not pretend that this is something new. One uh, video footnote in the midst of the uh, post-race flap on Monday. Force got physical with an official. That cost him a $10,000 fine. So what do you think about all this? Well, let's go to the email. Fans who paid good money to watch Force fix the race are being screwed. Too bad Tony didn't bitch slap him back to California. I hope Height is real proud, says Benjamin. Dave, with Mike Dunn leading the way, the haters all need to get a clue about racing. It's a business first and a sport second. Force made a good business decision, according to Joe in Baltimore. Bit of a difference of opinion. Imagine that. Uh, Mike Dunn, of course, the ESPN analyst, he triggered a lot of response, both pro and con, by coming down very hard on force on the air. Let me toss this out for the sake of discussion. Let's say we have a scale on which to measure tanking for your teammate. And over on this end, the time-honored NASCAR tradition where you just kind of ease out of the way and let your teammate lead a lap and collect those all-important bonus points, and then you ease back on by. Sure, there's a big difference in circumstance and degree compared to what Force did, but ethically, it's the same. Far end of that scale, how about the accusation Nelson P.K. Jr. crashed on purpose in Singapore, bringing out a safety car that helped ensure his teammate Fernando Alonso would win the Grand Prix. Crashes can easily involve collateral damage. The FIA taking all this very seriously. They have a specific rule prohibiting team orders, and it's worth remembering where that rule came from. Remember 2002? Rubens Barrichello dominated the Austrian Grand Prix, only to be instructed by Ferrari near the end, slow down, let your teammate Michael Schumacher pass. Points, points, don't you know? Michael so embarrassed that he insisted Rubens take the top spot on the podium. The FIA hated that. Find the team a million bucks. Not long after, last lap, USGP at Indy. Schumacher decides it's time for a payback with a quick flip of the throttle. Barrichello wins. And into the tank goes the most successful driver in Formula One history. Shortly thereafter, FIA said no more team orders. And a week from Monday, they will begin hearing evidence on the Renault PK team orders accusation with the future of Renault as a Formula One team hanging in the balance. So we add all this up, and what do we get? Question of the week. Should there be rules against team orders in racing? If so, how should those rules be enforced? Feel free to weigh in on any aspect of the story. How do you feel about team orders? With that, let's go to the phones from Andalusia, Alabama. Pronounce your name for me. Is it Mahali? It's Mahaley. Mahaley. Uh, I apologize, uh, Mahaley. I've been on with you before, uh, but I just, uh, that was my question. I, I wanted to ask you, do you think that Force did throw that race? As obvious as it is, I hope you have the right answer. But uh, Yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think Force threw the race. However, that's a key, that, that, that's a crux of the issue, perhaps. How do you prove yeah. that Force uh, yeah, threw that, the race? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, that, that's the thing. How do you prove something like that? I think that was a 
it was obvious to the people who were watching it. However, with the NHRA's, I guess their definition of throwing a race or not throwing a race, they saw it different than the other. Well, I, I mean, I think they the have. World. I think they have the same difficulty. They said they checked the, uh, and I don't know they what the what their facilities. I checked the computers and stuff on the motor yeah, and said, well, they didn't. Some things like that. I'm a I'm a long time NASCAR fan, and I've I've always always liked John Force as far as uh, drag racing goes, and that that really lost any respect that I had for the man. He's always been a I thought he was a stand up guy, and and then after the race, he kind of denies it and gets mad and tries to redirect the attention to uh, so Mr. John losing to his daughter rather than the fact that he just threw a race, and that that made me lose a lot of respect for him as a as a professional. I think there were a lot of people, perhaps, who shared that opinion, ignoring the fact, perhaps, that this is a long and time-honored tradition, as we noted in drag racing and a lot of other forms of uh, racing. I suspect we'll hear a lot more on this later in the show. We want you to call in, give us your opinions on the uh, question of the week. Should there be rules against team racing, uh, team orders, and how would you uh, enforce them?